it's a great thing to look at other people's places and go, oh, it's so beautiful. But you know, a lot of times it's like, how do you get there? How do I make up space like this? Today, we're visiting with somebody who has created a lovely outdoor room, really, an extension of the house that has been put together over a few years. And we're gonna talk about how you can do this too. This place is the creation of Jolene Fector. And Jolene, I'm so happy to be here with you today. Thank you. And I want to ask you, first stages. I mean, obviously, you put this in over time. What did you do first? Well, the neighborhood was relatively new. There were no trees anywhere, and I knew I had to have trees. Sure. So the first thing I did is I put in 13 trees to line the perimeter of the backyard. Really create the space, the, out, the outline the space. Yes. I see willow oaks. Yeah. Yes, I have about three willow oaks. I had, the rest were all maples, but mm -hmm. a variety of um, right. colors, so I'd get good color in the fall. Yeah, uh-huh. They say start with the big stuff first so it, it can grow up. Right, so they've had four years to grow. They're doing pretty good, actually. So the second thing we did was I put an irrigation system in, mm -hmm. knowing that I was going to do something with all yes. of this space. You had an idea of what you, yes. where things were going to be. So, so the yeah. second summer was irrigation system. Okay. You can only afford to do so much. Sure, every You're year. On a budget. Sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I've been piecemealing the whole project all yeah. along. So sure. the trees went in the first summer. July 4th right. weekend, so oh. I watered it and watered it and watered no it and watered it, but they tough. did great. Yeah. yeah, it was tough, but they were half price. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so a little bit of water and I get my trees all half price. Yeah. Then um, the irrigation system yeah, went in right. the next year. Right. And then I waited until about two and a half years ago to do my hardscape. Okay, and the hardscape is spectacular. Let's take a look at that. Okay. I can see that you obviously were working on a set of a series of curves in this garden. That was always your your vision for this. It was. I wanted to add interest. So at the same time, I put the shade trees in. I put the crepe myrtles in, mm -hmm. and I knew that I wanted to bring the hardscape out, use the primary area of the backyard, and I wanted it rounded in like two or three places. So that's why these crepe myrtles are four years old as well, even though the hardscape's two and a half years old. Right. Because I wanted it curved on this side. I wanted it curved on that side. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to add interest. Right. You have a kind of a long rectangular shape here, so it makes a lot of sense to do curves and otherwise, break it up. Otherwise, it looks like a landing pad for an airplane. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no doubt. Jolene, this hardscape is really pretty magnificent. Looks like you must entertain a ton. We have neighborhood functions here and I have family functions here. Had as many as probably 70 people wow. on this patio before. With food, we'll move some of this stuff out, bring mm -hmm. tables in, so. It's lovely. It's, uh, it's beautiful and at night it's really gorgeous because there's a lot of lighting. I've mm -hmm. got 33 trees, they're all lit. The landscape's lit, the, um, the hardscape's lit. So it's really beautiful at night. Oh. It's great for entertaining. Well, and you've got a fire pit. My, yep. my goodness, you've got, I, it's an expansive fireplace. I can see spending a lot of time out here. It's quite relaxing. I bet, after a hard day at work, Work can be a little stressful, and it's my refuge. Uh, I tell you, I have to have some place to come and decompress, and mm -hmm. this is it. I'll put some jazz music on, just uh, come out here and sit, uh, have my soda. Most people have a glass of wine, I have soda, and um, just relax. I see, I mean, you've got a house right behind you, but you've very effectively screened that off. Yes, um, it took three attempts though. The arbovitas, I was getting a lot of uh, rain runoff off the hill. Oh, they don't like that. They don't like that at all. And so I lost the first two rows of wow. arbovitas. Yeah, it was painful, very painful for me and my lawn care guy. But they ended up putting two or three drains in. And it looks and like they bermed it up a little back they there did, too. They uh -huh. did berm it, they put drains in underground and they are beautiful now, they're thriving. These have been here about a year and a half mm -hmm. and I'm not worried about them anymore. Well, you're not, I'm not seeing dead foliage in there. So No, they're so, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so Julene, tell me when this bed was created. Well, the core of the bed was created two years ago when the hardscape went in. Okay. They brought the big heavy rocks in. Right, this they brought path. the creek in, and it's actually a functioning creek. When it rains a lot, it does work as a swale. Right, it um, drains the water off. Yeah. yeah, and then the plants I change every year. Mm -hmm. It's got a combination, perennials. So the bed was created but not filled, basically, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. And you've got a ton of color here. Uh, that's that's important to me. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. what it's all about. I go through. I've got some perennials. I've got uh, some annuals. I've got mm -hmm. a ton of tropicals. Yeah, I see because that. Because in this heat, I mean, 
Yeah. No matter how hot it gets, they look pretty. They look beautiful. They do. They I bloom go, nonstop. They do bloom yeah. nonstop. I go for color, mm -hmm. and I basically just buy what I like. I'll leave yeah. the I'll leave the landscape nursery, and they'll say that's the lady that always buys all the pretty stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I just buy stuff I like that I think looks good together, and. Um, Turns out okay, it's pretty much freeform garden. Mm -hmm. I can see that. And it's not a huge space, so it's not like you have to buy a thousand flats or something to fill right. it up. It's, no, it's, it's not huge. Yeah, it's, it's, it's intensive. Is and what, that's yeah. what I was going mm -hmm. for. That's the exact look mm -hmm. I was going for. I wanted it compact. I can tell you love this hot fuchsia pink, like this Tonto. Oh, yeah, and the, the Tonto, the, and the bougainvillea. bougainvillea, right? Oh, it's so beautiful. Uh, yes, I love, I love the pinks, I love the purples, mm -hmm. I love the yellows. Jolene, I'm really interested in this beautiful fatsia you've got here. A lot of people ask me what that is. I finally remember what it is. It's they call it spider's web or yeah. fatsia. Japonica, I Japonica, think. Japonica, yeah, and the variety is spider web because it's got this beautiful veined pattern, it, you know, like spider web. I love it. It's a rare evergreen that comes from Japan. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping I can save it through the winter. Yeah, it's marginally hardy here, but if you protect it in a cold snap, I know people who have fetsias, so that's yeah. quite, it's beautiful. I love the effect of you. You've got the, the clara and the hydrangeas. This whole border along the north side of your house is really, really handsome. Thank got, you. I'm seeing rhododendrons and oh, I love these encore azaleas. This uh, looks like royalty. I think it is, yes. Yeah. That beautiful, that same gorgeous fuchsia pink. And you know, it's August and it's blooming, which is the great thing. I know, August <laughs> and September, they will be beautiful. Yeah. I've got some encore over on the other garden mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I just love those. Yeah, things. and I filled this garden up on purpose. Now, before. I joined Master Gardener and before I learned about the right plant in the right place, uh -huh. I planted this. Right. So you just told me what that is? Yeah, this is Viburnum dentatum and it's probably the one called Blue Muffin, which is wi widely available. And it's a great plant. It's a native shrub, but I can see that you've been cutting it hard to try to keep it low. I trim it every two weeks. Yeah, it's a <laughs> bodacious grower in the summer. Okay. This plant wants to get 12 feet tall. So it, you're fighting its natural I've habit. I've got it in yeah. the wrong place. Yeah, but yeah. it's a great plant and you can move it. In the winter, which is when you do this sort of okay. thing with woody plants, when it's dormant, you're gonna wanna dig it okay. up and put it somewhere where you can let it achieve I'll, its full I'll do beauty. that, and so it likes full sun? It likes, it, it, it'll, a little shade or full sun, not deep shade. Okay. It's, it's not a deep shade plant. Yeah, because I work mm -hmm. hard to keep this maintained, yeah. mm -hmm. so I didn't know that, so I will yeah. certainly move that in the winter. And the nice thing about this plant is if, if allowed to grow, it, it blooms these uh, clusters of white blooms that then set these brilliant kind of blue berries. It's really pretty. And I've never gotten to yeah. see that because I have and to keep cutting it back. birds love the berries. Okay. So okay. it's a major wildlife plant. I love your magnolia too. I know, you know, I'm, fr I'm from St. Louis and mm -hmm. been in Nashville 10 years and there's no way I was gonna have a yard without a magnolia. Sure, that looks like Bracken's Brown Beauty with this beautiful so named because the underside of the leaves are particularly brown on this variety. It's a really gorgeous, I love gorgeous it. one. Yeah, and they do do well. And this is one of the hardiest varieties, so good choice on your part. Love pondless waterfalls. Tell me about this. Well, I had a spotlight on this area. It was initially about a five by five square piece of stone. Mm -hmm. And I would put different things in it for the holidays. Yeah. And nothing was really working for me. And I thought, I just don't have that focal point. Mm -hmm. I, I thought about statues. I thought about several things. I tried several things. And finally, I thought, you know what? I just need water. Right. I just need water. It'll add to the relaxation of the space. So this is what I did this spring. This has been here about three months. So this is months. your latest. This yeah. is my latest project. You don't have to worry about mosquito larvae and, and you know, the sort of the maintenance of keeping up a body of water. It oh just my recycles. goodness. What a great setting for your love of tropicals. That is that a Thai giant back there? That beautiful upright elephant ear there? It's gorgeous. I think it's a banana tree, but you may know better than me. I think it's an allocation. <laughs> it but, probably but is. That's a banana over there. There we go. That, okay. That I, like one. I said, I'm yes. still learning. I'm still learning. But yeah, I just want it all mm -hmm. mass tropicals around. Oh, I just want it to feel like I was south. It, yeah. No, this is this is really great. And I got to tell you, I this this just charms me. 
Right down here, you've got working as a ground cover, a plant that most people yank out as a weed with these little starry white flowers. That's called Virginia buttonweed, and most people hate it. And you've left it, and it's lovely the way it's creeping through Well, things. beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? That's true. A weed <laughs> is a, uh, one person's weed is another yeah, person's Yeah, I flower. just, I wanted something kind of creeping into the, mm -hmm. into the rocks a little bit sure. that was low. And I liked the white, and I liked the way it was spreading, so. And bees like it, you know? And I, so yeah. I left it. I yeah. thought, I like it, so I left it. Well, this is just charming, Jolene, I just Thank gotta tell you. you. And I, I admire the amount of work you've taken and you've got a good eye. I, mean, I, I, I do have to tell well. you, I gotta give some credit. I got five little girls in the cul-de-sac that helped me. Oh. I've got two little granddaughters that helped oh. me. So ages two to 11, I've got about eight little helpers <laughs> that will really help. Oh, they'll that's come, great. they'll help me pull weeds, they'll help me deadhead, because I maintain all this all by myself. Uh, yeah. So um, I've got little girls in the neighborhood. I got my granddaughters, That's and wonderful. it's kind of fun. And you know what's awesome is it's giving them a love for gardening. Yes, getting their hands in the dirt. They they know the word deadhead. <laughs> they know the words deweed. Yeah. So it's kind of fun because I'm able to teach the, the little next girls. Generation of Absolutely. So it makes it kind of fun. Well, this has been a delight, Jillian. Thank, Thank you so you. much. For I appreciate us. you coming. Ah, Thank you. It's been great. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.